political history of the numbers. I have changed it because to teach history, you have many professors and lecturers. What I want to share with you a panoramic view of non political book vis a vis contemporary political realities. For me, no better occasion and opportunity I would have got than the present one today. Why? Because the world, the future world belongs to you, younger generation. And whatever we discuss, we deliberate today will have bearing on the future. Today I am speaking to you not as an ex politician, but I have transformed myself into a lecturer. I am today speaking to you as a teacher, not as a politician. Because a teacher normally is honest in his expression. He doesn't hesitate, a teacher. Because he has to teach truth. And a teacher can also forecast what will happen tomorrow. And a teacher is brave, straightforward, other. Therefore, today I would like to dress myself all the ornaments of a teacher, the attributes of a teacher who can. Tell the younger generation what is truth. Really? We are here not to please each other, but we are here to know what we are, what should we be, and what is the future for us. I think this is the occasion which I would like to express to you with honesty and with frankness. Number one. Today in our society, we only hear about victims, criticism, blackmailing. But no one is talking about the present in the future of Nagaland. Today, we only hear about factionalism. Everything is negative, 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 and we hardly hear anything about the positive approach of our problem. And therefore, Young people, you have to show the responsibility of building a new, brighter, united, prosperous life. And therefore, I want to share with you what I think best for another people. Now, you are an enlightened citizen. In our times, we should memorize everything. You know, nothing was available, nothing was seen, nothing was heard. Whatever teachers taught us, we used to only memorize. I'll give you one simple example. Thermoflux. It was an elementary science. But we never saw this uh, thermoflux. We only draw that picture. So we used to practice like this, memorize. We never knew. And during our time, even our political leaders, they talk about you and no, you and no, yeah. But we thought that it is like heaven, like heaven. Yeah. We never knew. So we were in complete darkness in the 40s, even in the 50s. But today, you people, the world is in your 
you have in your mobile, you can hear everything. In television, you know the entire world. You can see. Not only hear, but you can see. And you can hear. And you can learn. And you can even talk. You can interview, talk, speak to your friends in London, in America, in Japan. And that is the world in which we live. We are part of that civilization. We are part of that world. And yet, Nagas could not come out the old cocoon. We have not been able to come out. And that is the reason why today I want to give some introductory uh, about Nagaland. Nagaland today is like a terribly wounded person. Groaning, groaning, groaning helplessly under the weight, under the domination of dominant forces which are trying to cripple us which are trying to destroy us morally, physically, economically, politically. And we are really suffering. Now people are growing. Because an older people come, is helpless. And what that does he want? He wants revenge. He wants to kill. But no. Don't want everyone to own that man. Who will help you? Who will bring the remedy for you? And that is the exact position which I could uh, see. Now, we are like a wounded person in delirium with a form of early recovery. And when I see all this situation, it is like the typical story given to us about dry bones. We have seen that during Ezekiel time, he said he was also like a darkness. But light came to him, according to the Bible. Then when he opened his eyes, in that very oh, all the bones, and that also dry bones. And when they drive over to the line. But suddenly, again, in the midst of that, a new dawn came. It is a day, sometimes difficult to express how it should go down, and how it should be, and how I should salute the man who is here. Maybe, sir, I would like to start up with something very personal also. It's like, I'm going to tell you a story. The first time I met Sir, not personally, of course, I saw him in person was many years back, 1980s, mid-80s. He was a chief guest in a town called Meluri. He came, I was a boy, I was a student. There, what they did is they pulled his jeep all the way three kilometers from the junction to the playground. And by the way, in this, we don't have vehicles with power brake. Power steering. Manually, literally, the boot. All that I'm trying to say is the adulation and admiration for our speaker when he was there, then the chief minister, was tremendous. Not only that, they composed
specifically for the occasion. Maybe they have modified a fox song for him that day. And sir, during my time, general knowledge, we have to know you, Dr. Isi Jammer, the Chief Minister of Nagaland. Every now and then, we have to update you. A life, my life as a student, as a young man, as an academic, was thoroughly impressed with your life. I don't have to repeat again what we have achieved. It's difficult, actually, to say it's easy. I want to be so and so. I want to be so and so. It's difficult. But I'd like to mention, among us, millions and lakhs, there could be only few architects. Only a few architects, only a few visionary leaders who can lead us. He is a living example of that. He is a living legend among us. He is a statesman par excellence. It's, can you imagine that he, in the, forget about the 80s, 50s, 60s, he was in New Delhi as a parliament secretary to the Prime Minister Nehru with Indira Gandhi. And then today he will be sharing some of the some of his interactions, some of his activities, political history. Why I mentioned that he is the architect, one of the most important architects. He is there. He was there. Done that. Who better tell us the story about ourselves, about Nagas, about our society, than him? And it's important because without knowing the past. You cannot project the future. There is no way. You should know your past. There could be some mistakes. He is there to enlighten us. I hope, sir, today he will tell us the story. And uh, we are looking forward to a very exciting interaction with you. Thank you. Nagaland TV, Sop Manulaga Awas. Watch us live on Geo TV and on your television sets as well. For Dumapu viewers, we are on channel number 994 in Global Chapter and Kohima and Mokokchong viewers, switch to channel number 138 on Hornbill Digital. For all news and updates, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and Twitter.